Alright guys, this video is over the scientific method. Um, so you've done the scientific method several times, although we have to review it every year. So remember, it is the way that scientists answer questions and investigate our world. So remember, you ask a question first, then you do some background research, construct a hypothesis, test your hypothesis uh, by doing an experiment, and then you analyze the data and draw a conclusion, and then report your results. So were you right or not? Okay, make sure you're filling in your C notes. Um, you will have a quiz when you guys get to class when this video is due. So make sure that you take down all your notes so you can use them on your quiz. All right, so first we're going to start with the definition. Okay, so a definition of the scientific method is a step-by-step -step process that scientists go through to find the answers to a problem. All right, guys, so now we're going to go through the steps of the scientific method, um, and these are the orders they should be done. Um, the first thing you're going to do is identify your problem. Okay, so this is the question that you're trying to answer. Um, after that, you're going to do some research. So you're going to collect as much information as possible about the problem through your observations, um, looking at what other scientists have done, looking at keywords and terminology, um, things like that. All right, so continuing with the steps, step three, you're gonna state your hypothesis. This is your best educated guess or prediction based on the research you've gathered. So you have to make sure you do the research first so that you can make an educated guess instead of just doing what you think. Step four, you're gonna test the hypothesis. Okay, this is using an experimental design to co collect data in a controlled way. So remember, controlled experiments have only one variable and everything else remains the same. Otherwise, you won't know what caused the change. Okay, step five, you're gonna form a conclusion. So you're gonna look at the hypothesis and look at the data you collected and decide whether your hypothesis was correct or not. Step six, you're going to report your conclusion. So you'll write a detailed report on the experiment so that other scientists will learn from your work and can copy or repeat your experiment if they feel maybe you made a mistake or they want to expand upon it. All right, so when you write up your lab report, which is your last step, okay, you should always include your purpose or your problem or your question, okay, your hypothesis, which was your educated guess, any and all materials that you need um, to do the experiment, your step-by-step -step procedure, any data you collected, your charts, your graphs, things like that, and your results and observations, which should be on your charts and um, graphs, and then your conclusion, okay? If your lab report is missing any of these things, okay, then it won't be complete. All right, so let's look at some terminology and vocabulary you're gonna to need to know. Um, we're gonna work on these in class two, so make sure that you have them written down. Um, a controlled experiment is an experiment that has only one variable and everything else is constant or stays the same. A variable are the changes that occur in an experiment that could affect the outcome. An independent variable is the variable that is being tested Okay, so it's what you control, what you change. Okay, a dependent variable, changes that occur as a result of the tests. Um, usually the dependent variable is what you're measuring or observing, so like how tall a plant grows. All right, so graphing independent and dependent variables. Okay, um, when you graph your independent variable, you're going to put those on your x-axis um, or your horizontal line. Okay, when you graph your dependent variable, they are going to go on your vertical axis or on your Y line. Okay, so make sure you fill these in on your chart that's in your notes. Okay, or draw this picture if you're making your own notes. Okay, one thing that helps us remember um, what to put where is we use the words dry mix. Okay. And this means you're dependent or you're responding variables go on your y-axis. Okay, you're manipulated.
or you're independent. Variables go on your X axis. Okay, so when you hear me refer to dry mix, okay, it just helps you remember which variables go on which axis. Okay, your control group, okay, is the testing group that you will compare the other groups to. So this should be indicated at the beginning of the experiment. Um, this either does not receive your independent variable or it is as close to real life as possible. Your experimental groups are those where you did apply the independent variable. Okay, so this is the end of this video. Okay, make sure you've taken all your notes and you've written everything down. Um, also write down any questions that you may have, um, things that you didn't quite understand. Um, and we will go over these uh, when you get to class and you'll have a quiz that day too. All right, I hope you guys have a good evening.